Hi everybody, it's Laura. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to work on a layered bracelet. I had one of my subscribers ask for a tutorial on doing a layer style bracelet. So come along with me. We're going to get things together and we are going to make a layered bracelet using the Bargain Bee Box and Coriana chain. Okay, welcome back. And for those of you that have may have just stumbled on my channel and you're wondering what is Bargain Bead Box? Bargain Bead Box is a monthly beading subscription for $23 a month. Comes right to your door for that amount. And you also get a coupon code that you can shop at their sister store, 30% off all month long. And um, you get all kinds of beads. Um, you can look at my playlist and see the unboxings. Um, I have a coupon code that will save you $2 off and your first month subscription is Dragonfly2. All that information will be in the um, description below along with a link. You can just click on it. It helps support my channel and I greatly appreciate that. Um, but if you're new here, please hit that subscribe button and it helps me grow my channel and hitting that like and commenting helps YouTube to let other people see my videos. And let me know if you have a suggestion of something you want to see. Um, other items like I had one of my subscribers say, hey, can you show me how to make a um, multi-layer necklace? I have never done this design. I thought of it last night. Um, and today I was like, watching a video and somebody was wearing this real pretty multi-layer design with kind of floating beads and I have been on the floating design you know for the, quite a while I love how it looks so we're gonna do this we're using two of these um they look like horse eyes um connectors very beautiful one for each side we're using some and this all come in the bargain bead box every bit of this um these i believe also did at one point i had bought them just stuck them in this bag because they were easier to get in and out they are i believe a six millimeter um and then we're going to use these glass um beads we're going to use some of the shell beads some of these little tiny um, bead caps, some of these beautiful road night. They're gorgeous. I'm not going to go and use a lot, a ton of stuff. I may need to get in and use some of my, um, little, um, crimp beads because I'm running low. So guys, if you're ready to watch this, oh, and I'm using some of the little chip beads they have a big big hole in them i was surprised i wasn't sure um but yes they fit on the coriana chain lovely so we're going to use some of those also all right so i have a piece cut at five inches a piece cut at seven inches and a piece cut at nine inches believe it or not that piece that laid here it's every bit of that so let's go ahead and start. We're going to lay aside what we're not going to use. I do need to get a um, larger um, oh, what do you call it? First, I need it up oh, that has up. Oh, this is also from the bead box this month, the um, lobster clasp, but I do need a bigger jump ring to clasp into. And we'll also be using some chain that goes up around the neck. This is just for the front of the necklace only. So we'll get that out when we're getting ready to. I did go get my um, measuring tape out of the bag where I was set up. I'm just going to spill out some of the crimp beads and set aside what we're not using at the moment. Um because I don't want to knock these off flying. And these I'm going to put definitely, you're going to see 
a gnat in here. I can't get rid of me. And all of this come in this month's box. So and you're going to see half her hair. Sorry. She just, her hair goes everywhere. <laughs> all right. So this is the very top of the, the very top layer. And I want to add one of these and I kind of want to make him like off to the one side. I kind of want to put one of these over here and maybe one of these in the middle. I'm not making it make sense or I might do this. I might just do that kind of like helter, helter skelter. Um, because I kind of know how I want this to set. I am going to go ahead on one end. You've seen me struggle with these if you watch my other video. There, this one went on easily. I have one over there that needs to have the whole, you know, made it just a tiny bit bigger. We're going to put on our clamshell up through the bottom, out through the mouth of the clamshell. We're going to pick up one of our um, tiny little crimp beads. We're going to take our chain nose pliers. We're going to grab a hold of that. We're going to bring it almost to the very, very end. And we're going to press down. And we're essentially squishing. When we're done, this is actually going to make this about five and a half inches. So don't worry about losing that little bit that we're, you know, losing in there. We're going to close him. Gently, we're going to bring this the rest of the way closed. And then on the loop, we're going to give it a good squish so that they sit inside of each other nice and tightly. Now, I want him on first. So we're just going to put him on the Coriana chain. And then I kind of want him like maybe up a little higher than the rest. It's going to be a little asymmetrical. So we're adding another... Um, let me get these down here where you can see them. We're adding another um, crimp bead because I just want him to stay put. So I want him maybe about there. So I'm going to put my crimp bead where I want him to stop at. Looking at this and I'm like, where do I want this bead? Now let's go here and here. So yeah, let's let's stop him right about there. This way he can float up, but he can't come back down and connect with the other beads. So he's in place. And I'm thinking about letting this one just float, this pretty rodentite. Think about just letting him be wherever he wants but not let this little dude be wherever he wants. And you know what? I think I'm just going to put him on here without a bead cap. Because he will have... Oh, I need a crimp bead to hold him in place. And I think we'll stop him because we're going a little asymmetrical. Let's stop him right about there. I don't normally do asymmetrical. So this is really going to bother me. We're going to stop him right there. Yep, this is going to get me. But you know what? It's all about growth and doing new things and stepping out of my normal. And then we're going to go ahead, get him on, and he's going to look like that. I like it. Now we're going to go ahead, put on our next clamshell.
up through the bottom, out through the mouth of the clamshell, put on our crimp bead, and again, grab him with our pliers, bring him up, give him a crimp. We're not really crimping, we're smooshing, smush, smush, smush. Bring up our clamshell, tug test, close him. I am going to give him just a tiny hug and then smush these together so that they will stay. And this is how this one is going to look. This bead is going to be totally floating. This one is going to be very much asymmetrical, but he's not going to go any farther than there. I like it. I like it. Okay, so there is the first layer. Now we need the seven inch one that looks like nine. Let me just make sure. Yes. This one is seven inches. And again, we're going to go ahead and close up one end. I think it works better when I lay them down because I have the tremors today for some reason. Up through the bottom. Get me some more of these little guys. Get the crib bead on. Now I am probably not going to edit these videos, so you get to see this right from the get-go. And then we're going to bring it all the way to the end, and again, smush. You don't want it at the very tippy top end, because if you do, you could actually break off the chain and um, then your, your crimp bead will fail and your chain will come apart just like that. I may not have had him on there the best. And sometimes you have to just, you know, cut that little bit off from your chain. Because your chain could be like really thin or mashed down or something. Because that happens. And if you look at this chain, it does look kind of funky there at the end. So I will take that very tiny bit off. And we'll do that again. That way, we're crimping onto a fresh little piece of chain. There we go. Tug test. We're going to tug this again. And he's on there tight. And he's not going to interfere, so I'm not going to cut that extra off. He's still down in there. Squeeze a little. And close that end up good. And then we're going to go ahead and figure out what's going on this one. This one, I think I want to use this, this, um, this, maybe a couple of these with, you know, these in the middle. Like that on this one. I really like that idea. I like it. Let's do that. So I don't mind them going up, but with them having bead caps on the in-betweens, I'm not going to want them to go up. So in this instance, we're just going to pick up a bead, a crimp bead. We're going to drop this on. And then our next question is, with this... Exactly where do we want to position those beads? I 
I think we want them to be start right about here. And then we would have this bead be here, these be here. I think that'll work out really good because there's going to be plenty of space between them. So we're going to mash and then check and make sure he's in place and he is. We're going to go ahead and move this out of our way. And we're going to put on one. A bead cap facing him. Like so. And then we want to put a bead cap so he's facing the other bead. So we want to go through the outside and in through the inside. Like so. So they look like that. And then we're going to put our next bead on. And because there's bead caps in the middle of these, I do want them to have a crimp bead on either side of them snugly. That looks so pretty. I love that. All right, so we're going to get a bead cap, a crimp bead on here. Bring it all the way down. And I'm going to hold him in my hand like so. I'm going to grab that crimp bead right there and we're just going to smush. Pressing down, making sure he's on there. That is so pretty. Now the red one, you know what? He really needs something, doesn't he? I don't want him by himself. Let's see what we've got in our little box here. I kind of don't, don't know if I want him on there by himself. You know what guys? Let's see what else we've got. You know what? I kind of like the bead caps on that red one also. Let's do it. Let's just do it. Hmm. I like it. Let's do it. Okay. I wasn't going to, but, you know, it's, the beads are speaking. We're doing what the beads say to do. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to put on a crimp. We're going to kind of sort of find the middle. Like I said, this is going to be kind of sort of asymmetrical. Okay, one last gnat. Um, maybe I'll kind of figure out the middle. Seven inches. Three to three and a half. Mm. We'll bring that down just a titch. Whoops. Right about there. And mesh. not going anywhere. We want to put on a bead cap. Oops, see, there was two stuck together and I didn't even realize it. One of the little rodentites bead cap. And a crimp. Oh yeah, that was a perfect idea. 
Again, I'm going to pick this up and put it in my hand. And I want to make sure I'm smooshing kind of sort of the same direction. Smush, 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 smush. And then I'm going to do the next series. Again, B cap. Kind of sort of eyeball about how far away that is. We're going to back it up just a smidge. Smush. Check it. Oops, we want to put the bead on. Yeah, let's get some colorful one in there. And then be kept facing him. Be kept facing away. Whoops. I'm saying be kept facing away and put the bead on instead. He felt kind of thicker. Now I'll put the bead on. And add a crimp bead. That is so pretty. Once again, smush. And he's on there. Now let's put our other end on. One of those through the back, out the mouth of the clamshell, pick up a crimp. Like I said, this is all made to be asymmetrical. So, you know, one thing about asymmetrical, you really don't have to stick to making sure everything is perfect, do you? Smush. And I'm going to make sure it's on there tight. Pull on, close, give it a hug, and then smush these together. And there is the second to go with the first. I really like that. That's going to be really nice. All right. For the third one, we're going to get all these out of the way because we're not going to need these. We need the chips. Oh, wow, that really worked out pretty good. Okay, so here's the nine inch piece, as you can see. We're going to do the same thing. Get the other end prepared because I already know what I'm doing up through the end of the clamshell, out through the mouth, through the crimp, and now we're going to grab this, bring it up, close it, by smush smush, <clears throat> do our Hug test. We're going to give this a hug and then we're going to smush this down. Now, I want these just to be right here in the center, like this, and they're going to kind of be held all in place. So there's that one, that one, that one, that one. And that one. So they're all going to have gold holding them in place. So I'm going to start with him. And yes, you could, you know, not put one on the end. By all means, 
And I'm going to show you a trick. We're going to put these all on just like this. But it might bite me in the butt if I do that. Because if one fails, yeah, but I'm only going to do one at a time. So we can load all these on, but do not close your end. Oop, I forgot to put my bead on for him. Come on, little dude, we want to get you on there. Thank you. They're about the same size, so it don't matter. And I wasn't worried about sizes when I laid these out here. I just chose five. Okay, so here's what I have. And I want them all to be fairly close in the middle and the front. And I am going to kind of put this together so I know where the middle of my front is. So that's going to be there. That's going to be there. I'm going to scoot these out of my way for right now. I just want to work on this middle one. I only need one bead. And I don't mind if it ha it's going to want to have some movement, but not a ton of movement. So I'm going to kind of fiddle a bit where I want that bead. I'm going to get my crimp beads back down there because they're all taken off on me and I'm going to first crimp him get a hold of him get him down here and say that's where I want you and give him a mush get the stone back over there where he belongs get a hold of this crimp bead give him a mush. Now I can pick this up and kind of finish mushing those two crimp beads like so. Now I'm going to bring this one down, bring this one down, because they're next in line. I want to decide. I want them to only be that far apart. Right about there. So I'm going to smush. Bring him down. Bring down this one. I'm going to give him just a little bit of wiggle room. And smush. I'm going to bring that down. I want him to be right about there. Smush. Because I can come back and re smush all these. And then I want you to have about that much wiggle room. Get a hold of him. Right there. Now I can work on the other side. Pull you guys all the other way. 
and match you up with the other side. You right about here. And don't worry if they don't match. Smush. Smush. Bring you down. And smush. All right, now I'm going to straighten this out and I'm going to tighten these smushies so that they don't wiggle. I'm pretty sure I had that center one already nice and snug, so. And I'm pretty sure he was nice and snug. So there we go. We have our center one all nice and done up. Get it where they are somewhat near the middle. Well, I can't hold him. <laughs> but there's that. And... So this is because I had, I was using a smaller piece. He is just shy of nine inches. So that big stone is at dead center rate, not quite four and a half inches. So he's dead center. Now we're going to go ahead and put our clamshell on. And through the back, out through the mouth. And then we need, he's, oh, he's the one that we um, had an issue with. Okay. Now we're putting our final crib tube on, guys. And my pliers are coming out of their handle. There we go. We're going to grab our crimp tube, bring it up to the end, and squeeze. And make sure it's on there tight. Give it a tug test. Bring our final cramp clamshell up. Whoops. He hung up. Tug test. Give it a hug. He's a little wonky. Put him back into place. Give him a hug. You can have to play with them just a little bit and then squeeze these together. Okay, now we will need some jump rings because now this is where we connect all of these together. This is what makes this a multi strand for necklace. And I was going to use, I might use a four millimeter. Let's go ahead and try it because we're going to connect all these to those. And I believe we can do it with a four millimeter. Let's try it. If we can't, we will go to the six millimeter. So we're going to get a four millimeter. Oops. It's probably not a time to do it with a four millimeter when I'm shaking. Yes, that's gold. It's like it don't look gold. We're going to open. You want to make sure you go in the same order. The bottom. The middle. And the top. And now we're going to put our connector on. And now we're going to close this. And you want to make sure that it's good and closed because that connector is very, very thin. I'm actually going to grab my connector and try to pull it through that slot and it's not coming through. So here's what we have. 
here. And we want to make sure that we lay this out the way that we just put that on there. I'm going to do that again. This is a four millimeter. Find my little opening here. There we go. We're going to twist it open. We're going to start with our bottom goes on first, just like we did before. Our middle. Oh, wait, wait, wait. All right. If not, we'll take it back apart. So our bottom, our middle, and our top, and then our connector. And then I'm going to make sure that that is tight. And I had a feeling that was going to be wonky when I started closing it. Because it kind of wanted to go off to the side. Whoops, I'm going to pull, it's on there tight. Okay, let's pick them up. Okay, so I don't know if you guys can see, but that is, let me get my pliers out of the way. That is how that lays. Now, we're going to measure this. We already know this is 9 inches. These are about an inch each, so that's 10 inches. I'm going to, again, use the 4 millimeter to attach my chain, so I'm not adding a lot of length. So I have one 4 millimeter out. There's another. So we have 10 inches, and then we're going to add another 10 that'll give us 20 but because this is going to have a clasp um we're going to take um we're going to get this up out of our way a little bit we're actually going to take an inch off so i'm actually going to add well actually he's a tiny clasp and then we're adding this let's measure that if you're ever curious how much you need to take off from your chain, always lay it out there and measure. So yeah, we're going to be adding with the jump rings, we're going to be needing to take off about an inch. So I'm going to cut a nine inch. So basically two, four and a half inch pieces of chain. One is going to be just a little under four and a half inches because the lobster is bigger, and I want my old cutters for this. So this is the lobster half. That's for the lobster. And this one will be like four and three quarters to make up for what I cut off a little wonky. That way, when you cut, when you wear your piece of jewelry, your um, clasping will be dead center of the middle of the back of your neck. It won't be offset. And your piece of jewelry will hang evenly in the back of your neck. I do need to look and see if I have any leftover pieces. Nope. So that is for that. You check these ends before I put it together. Perfect. There's that. All right. Whoops. I'm caught on everything today. All right. Now let's assemble 
the rest of our necklace. This is beautiful. I love it. I love the asymmetrical look of it. Everything is gorgeous. Let's finish this. We're going to need a piece of chain. This is the shorter piece that the lobster will be on. And we are going to get a four millimeter. I love these little oval connectors. We're going to put our chain on. We're going to put our connector on. Make sure your connector is facing the direction you want it to face. You're not twisting it. And then I'm going to simply close it. Again, making sure that we've got a good closure. Perfect. Now we're going to go ahead and put our lobster on. The lobsters from Bargain Bead Box come with a jump ring. So we're going to utilize that jump ring. Open it. Whoops. And of course, everything falls apart. Put the lobster back on. We're going to put it on our chain. And we're going to close it. I am going to work hard on that. There we go. Now we're going to do the same over here. Get a four millimeter. Open it. This is a little bit longer piece of chain because we're just adding our um, jump ring directly to it for our closure. So we don't have that extra length. Slowly close that. Check that. It's perfect. There we go. And now we're just adding our closure for our lobster. And it does fit on this chain from Walmart. Just like that. Whoops. And now we're going to make sure it's all shut. We're going to clasp it. How beautiful is that? So when it's all laid out, right now it's fiddly because it's laying down instead of on a person. Let's get it all out there pretty. This is gorgeous. I absolutely love how this turned out. I am like sticking to this felt. <laughs> there we go. So I hope you enjoyed seeing how to make this layered necklace using the um, peach sorbet bargain bead box and making it a three layered necklace with the floating design asymmetrical as you can see nothing is perfect it's all asymmetrical even these down here i did not want everything to be all matchy matchy um this little guy's up higher these guys are over here more these guys that is perfect i could not have planned it better this was all just let's do it no planning just putting it out there. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed this. I will talk to all of you guys in the comments below. I appreciate each and every one of you. Have a wonderful day. Bye guys.